Okay, in this video, I'm going to make use of some code that's available from um, this particular uh, GitHub. Now, it's Yu Chen Aberlu. He has set out some code for Python model, uh, for uh, Black Scholes model in Python. I think it's very useful. I've run the code in Spider in the Anaconda Navigator, and I've made a few little tweaks. Not that it needs tweaks. Uh, it, because the code is working well uh, but just to make it a little bit more parsimonious and he also has similar uh, code for a uh, Python code for binomial model as well and I'm just going to take a little look at what's in there and set it out in the Anaconda Navigator so I'll invoke Anaconda Navigator and then I'll in the that environment I'll launch um, Spider right, which is just an environment for um, setting out uh, the, and implementing Python code. Now, what I have here, if, let's take a look. We have the Anaconda Navigator here, and I'm going to launch a Spider. It's three dot three dot two. So I think it's relatively up to date. Um, and the reason why here I'm interested in Python is because if we take a look at, let's just take this out for the moment. If we take a look at the TOB index, I'd, we might note that Python actually has become quite popular um, and rel relatively significant language in its own right and it's also very popular amongst the data scientists so uh, for instance I occasionally go into Kaggle and just look at some of the data science projects uh, in there and if you go into the kernels uh, gen generally in these kernels you have data and you have uh, some code for running estimations and a large number of these uh, projects um, are in Python and um, there's a few in R and it just to be when I looked at this before it probably was 50% or 50% Python but increasingly Python seems to be uh, prominent I'm not particularly sure why if it's just restricted to this particular um portal or it's more widespread but i think it's widespread so uh, i'm going to do a little bit of experimentation then with python and just to see in terms of in a very basic way what are its capabilities and speed and so on because one of the issues sometimes is speed and we know that c plus plus is a relatively primitive language and it's fast in terms of execution of code Python is an interpreted language, so should be a bit slower, all else being equal. Okay, so, okay, how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to start uh, by launching Spider, which I've done, and then I'm going to take a snippet of code. Now, it's not exactly going to be the same as the code that I've taken from Yu Chen Aberlu, right? I'm, it's... Uh, I'm going to follow as much as possible what's there and then um, the remove a little bit of the uh, I'll just have a for the Black Scholes model instead of having some kind of interaction in, in terms of inputting in S uh, as it's called up in terms of the running the program I'll just have straight values for S, K, R, T, Sigma which are the um, typical values that we include in uh, black shows and binomial model. So typically we have inputs in for uh, the underlying value of stock, the strike price of the option, time to maturity, uh, the risk free rate and volatility. Uh, and I'll just enter those directly in uh, in terms of the code and that'll avoid um, this more kind of complex code but this is perfectly good code and does serve useful purpose okay so let's see if I can uh, call up then okay we'll go with black shoulds initially and I just copy 
uh, this code, but keeping in mind that I've taken the code from where I've taken the code from uh, the GitHub, right? And the person question is Yu Chen Amber Lu. Okay, so uh, let's go back into Spider for a moment and I'll just paste in. So maybe I'll just remove this and paste. So paste. Now, when I run this code, right, uh, I probably will be asked to save it, but I'll just uh, run the file and it's asking to save. So I'll call it Black Scholes 2. Give the name. I'm not paying attention to where I'm putting it uh, for the moment. I just want to run the code to see uh, what we have here. And um, let's go into the variable explorer. And what you might note is I've entered the values of 100 for the asset price, 100 for the exercise, t is equal to 1, the risk free rate is equal to 5%, and sigma is equal to. 20. I'm familiar with those uh, parameter inputs for the Black Scholes model, uh, and I would expect that the value of the call is 1045. When I inspect over here, that's what I get, and I also get a set of Greeks, so a set of Greeks for the call, and a set of Greeks uh, for the put, and I have delta, gamma, vega, theta, rho, and likewise for the put option, so both for the call and the put. If I inspect here a little bit the the data, if I highlight, um, we can see the data gets arranged like this. Um, but it's also possible just to bring up the frame. And it's very nicely organized then in terms of we have a price for the call, 1045, which is consistent, 557, and delta gamma the Vega, Rho, Theta, they look about right uh, with uh, values that I'm familiar with um, when I ran the similar type of estimations for uh, call and put and their Greeks uh, using Black Shoals and C++ and VBA. Okay so, okay, so it looks reasonably good, right? We can redimension that a little bit if so required. Okay, so I'm going to close that down and then I'm going to open, I'm going to go to the other segment of code uh, that uh, again came from in another folder. Uh, so again, I'm going back into uh, GitHub and I'm going to take a look here now at, again, it's still uh, Yu Chen Amber Lu. Okay. And I'm going to take a look here at um, her uh, implementation of the Cox Ross Rubenstein tree and also uh, the Jarrah Rudd tree. And these are two classic type uh, numerical techniques that uh, are used for valuing options. Now, what we have here is, I think, just purely the European value. I don't think we have. Um, the, if I can inspect, we don't have in the code here uh, any reference to American options. We only can input in values and we would obtain then in our, in our estimations the European value. Uh, but uh, despite that, something that we like to demonstrate in terms of uh, when uh, teaching this area is the degree to which and the speed at which uh, these trees converge to some particular level. And you can kind of see that as we increase the step size here, going from 0 to 5,000, uh, the variability as the step size increases tends to reduce. And we, we, do, we get a kind of convergent both for the, for the, I think, the call value and the put value. So again, what I've done here is I've taken the code pretty much as given. And instead of having this more elaborate set of instructions for inputting in the parameter values where you would be prompted with a, what is the current stock price, what is the strike price and so on, right? And that in itself could be very useful. Um, what I uh, 
have done instead is just taken uh, Amber's code and um, just very simply entered in uh, values directly for the code. So in other words, just set S equal to 100, K to 100, T to 1, R to 0 0.05 and Sigma to 0 0.2. Again, another nice thing here with this with Python is the the graphing, right? That it, you seamlessly transition from inputting the code in and graphing. So let's just run it, to see how that goes. Okay, so I have the Cox Ross Rubenstein code here. We will just copy the code. Okay, and it's Amber's code. So I'll copy this code. Uh, then go back into Spider and file new file, file new, and uh, I would just paste over that what's there. Okay, and when we, I should probably probably clear the variables here, right? So we're starting afresh, and I'll just run the entire. Uh, segment of code so uh, again i'll say crr uh, jaro rod rod and i'll just call it two okay to distinguish it from a previous implementation and okay so uh, i did make a change in terms of i didn't go up to 1000 actually in terms of when i ran the tree right uh, the value that i tried to okay we, uh, again the same parameter values um, and then if, in terms of the number of runs we went in we started at a value of 100 step uh, steps in the tree went up to 1000 and we increased it in increments of 100 okay so um, now I could change it to 50 and try that again 50 Okay, 50. And in that instance, we should go in step sizes of 50 uh, all the way through for both the Cox Ross Rubenstein tree and the Jarrah Rudd tree, and we should be getting convergence uh, also. Um, okay, so let's run that again. So maybe I should clear here out the variables. And uh, let's run and see what happens and again okay now it's come back as 200 400 whatever but actually we probably can observe that there's a change here along let's just see what do we have the step sizes so this is for the graph and yeah, it looks fine. Let's just open up, um, see where our data is here. So runs, and the step size is going from 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. And that's for the uh, Cox Ross Rubenstein and for Jarrow Rudd. Um, the sigma is 0 0.2. Uh, the value of the call, let's just bring that out. We have frames. So the Cox Ross Rubenstein call is 1044. Uh, the Cox Rubenstein, Cox Ross Rubenstein put is 557. They're relatively accurate. Jarrod call 1045. Jarrod put uh, 557. So a reasonable level of accuracy. So it's a nice, overall, this is a, a nice environment in which to make the estimation it doesn't seem too slow uh, we could test it a little bit more rigorously if we put it up to 5000 and that's what amber would have had in her original code um, and i think i'll leave it there and if i need to add on something here i'll just do a second video so i'll stop the video at this point and um, i'll probably uh, create a second shorter video to finish up it